Hey there my fellow witches, Hazel here with the Magical Den channel, if you are a beginner and stepping into the path of paganism, wicca, or witchcraft, or you simply being drawn down this path then you have made it to the right channel where you will find helpful knowledge about the craft, its rituals, tips, and tricks. In today's video we will be discussing one of the sabbats in the wheel of the year, beginning with what we call, Yule, the winter solstice. Celebrated on the date of the winter solstice, Yule is the point on the wheel of the year when we acknowledge the beginning of the return of the light. The nights have reached their longest point, creating a sense of darkness that is almost overbearing. The air is cold, the deciduous trees are completely bare, and for those in northern climates, the season of snow is in full swing. Yet as far as the sun is concerned, this is a turning point toward increased daylight, and the promise that warmth of the growing season will eventually return. The longest night will now be behind us, and the sun will stay with us later each day, rising ever higher in the sky until the summer solstice, the turning point on the opposite side of the wheel. However, it will be a few weeks before this is noticeable, as the increase in daylight is only gradual at first. The sun actually appears to not alter its path across the sky at all during the days around the winter solstice. In fact, the word solstice comes from a Latin phrase meaning sun stands still. Likewise, much of nature seems to be still at this point. Birds have migrated south, many animals hibernate, and the snow covering the ground seems to have a quieting effect on the landscape. This is a time of turning inward, hunkering down, and tuning into our deepest selves. Many people see these short days and long nights as a time of self-reflection, spiritual study, and intention setting for the coming year. But before the deep winter sets in, we gather with friends and family to celebrate the renewal of the sun and the hope that comes with emerging from the darkness. This has always been a traditional time for both spiritual observance and merriment, and still is today, as we can see in the many different holidays and festivities associated with the start of the winter season. In many Wiccan traditions, Yule is the start of the new year. The seasons of the wheel and the annual story of the god and the goddess have completed the circle and now begin again. The goddess gives birth to the god, fulfilling the intention the divine pair set when they coupled at Beltane. As the sun god, his symbolic death and return to the underworld at Samhain led to the darkness of the past six weeks, and now his rebirth brings back the light. The goddess has transformed once again from her crone aspect back to the mother, who will now rest a while from her labor and emerge rejuvenated in the spring. This segment of the mythological cycle is at the heart of the Wiccan understanding of reincarnation, after death comes rebirth into new life. The sun illustrates this truth through its cyclical disappearance and reappearance. The earth, which never disappears, represents the never-ending presence of the divine universe. Of all the solar sabbats, Yule is probably the one most clearly rooted in an ancient pagan holiday, as it takes its name from a festival held in Germanic and Scandinavian cultures around the time of the solstice though the original Yule likely lasted for several days. Of course, many other peoples of the ancient world also observed the winter solstice, as we can see by the number of Neolithic monuments, like Newgrange in Ireland, built to align with the sunrise on this day. The Romans celebrated Saturnalia around this time, which involved feasting and exchanging gifts as well as ritual sacrifice. In Persia, this was when worshippers of the god Mitra celebrated his birth and the druids of the Celtic Isles are said to have gathered sacred mistletoe and sacrificed cattle on the solstice. But while some forms of Wicca may base their Yule celebrations on some of these other regional traditions, in general the Norse and Anglo-Saxon customs that give the Sabbath its name are what the day is best known for. In the lands of Northern Europe, the solstice festivities were the last opportunity for most people to socialize before the deep winter snows kept them from being able to travel. Great gatherings were held by the Germanic tribes where feasting, drinking, and ritual sacrifice of livestock took place. Bonfires were lit and toasts were drunk to the Norse gods such as Odin and Thor. These activities helped ensure a prosperous growing season in the coming new year, which was dawning now with the sun's reemergence from the dark shadows. 
Some of the traditions observed during these ancient festivals, such as the Yule Log, decorating with evergreen boughs and branches, warm alcoholic beverages known as wassail, and group singing, continued on through the centuries and are still part of many Christmas celebrations today. The Yule Log in particular was widespread in Europe, with many different regional customs attached to it. Traditionally made from a large log of oak, it was decorated with pine boughs, holly, or other evergreen branches and doused with cider or ale before being lit at the start of the festivities. In many places, this fire was lit with a piece of wood saved from the previous year's Yule Log. The log was supposed to be harvested from the land of the household, or else given as a gift, to purchase it was deemed unlucky. The Yule fire was tended so that it didn't burn out on its own, in part so that a piece of the log could be saved to start the following year's fire. The length of time for the fire to burn varied but was usually between 12 hours and 12 days. The Yule festivities, caroling, games, the exchanging of gifts, took place around the warmth of the fire. In some places, the ashes from the Yule fire were used to make magical charms, sprinkled over the fields to encourage the crops, or tossed into wells to purify the water. As with so many other pagan festivals, we can see that the magical power of fire was alive and well at Yule. The most obviously pagan remnant surviving in today's holiday traditions is probably the use of mistletoe. This parasitic plant called so because it grows attached to a host plant, usually oak or apple trees was significant to both the Norse and Celtic cultures, as well as the ancient Greeks and Romans. It's not clear why kissing under the mistletoe became a tradition, but it's thought to come from an ancient Norse myth involving the goddess Frigga and the death and restoration of her son Baldur. The significance of mistletoe at the winter solstice likely comes from the druids, who viewed the plant's ability to stay green while the oak it grew on was without leaves as a sign of its sacred powers. The mistletoe was ritually harvested at this time with a golden sickle and fed to the animals to ensure fertility. It was also valued for its protective properties, particularly against fire and lightning, and was used in medieval times for healing. Interestingly, once the Christian church had co-opted Yule and other solstice festivals in its quest for domination, mistletoe was prohibited as a decoration, most likely due to its association with magic. When celebrating Yule, many covens meet just before dawn on the day of the solstice to hold their Yule rituals, and then watch the rebirth of the god enacted as the sun rises. In some traditions, the fires and or candles are lit in encouragement of the sun god's emergence, welcoming his returning light. Themes of ritual may include regeneration, light in the darkness, and setting intentions for the new year. In some Wiccan traditions, this is the time to ritually reenact the battle between the Oak King and the Holly King. These twin brothers represent the opposing poles of the sun's annual journey through the seasons. The Holly King, representing the dark half of the year, reigns until the winter solstice, when he is cut down by the Oak King, who heralds in the beginning of the waxing daylight. This cyclical story serves as a reminder that light and dark are both essential parts of existence in nature, neither can exist without the other. For solitary Wiccans who live double lives as far as mainstream society is concerned, Yule can be a challenging sabbat to make time for, swamped as so many are with the obligations of the Christmas season. However, since plenty of the traditions associated with both holidays overlap, it's easy enough to infuse more conventional practices with a little Yule magic. For example, hang a sprig of holly above your door to ensure protection and good fortune for your family and your guests. Magically charge your Christmas tree ornaments before placing them on the branches. Whisper an incantation to the goddess over any cookies, spice cider, or any other holiday goods you make for your friends, family, or co-workers. You can spread the blessings of your own personal holiday throughout your community without anyone even knowing it. For those without indoor hearths, a yule log can be fashioned from a small tree branch, flatten it on one side so it will sit evenly on the altar and drill small holes to place candles into. Go outside and gather boughs of fir, juniper or cedar, as well as pine cones, holly berries, and any other natural decor to bring the energies of protection, prosperity, and renewal into your home. Use mistletoe to bring peace and healing to your life by placing leaves in a sachet or hanging it over your door. 
honor the rebirth of the sun by inscribing discs, pinwheels, or other solar symbols into a large red, orange, or yellow pillar candle. Light it at dawn on the day of the winter solstice to welcome the sun and the new beginning of the wheel of the year. Thank you so much for listening. Always remember that knowledge is power. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you will be notified of the next upcoming video. And as always, brightest blessings to my fellow witches.